Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to do a quick side-by-side -side comparison with the Nintendo Switch Super Mario Kart Racing Wheels. So let's go. I did two extended reviews on the channel regarding these Mario Kart Racing Wheels. I tested them out on different kind of video games and just was really figuring out which of the Racing Wheels are really worth picking up. The first one, the tiny one, is absolutely dirty cheap and it's a very fun piece of, let's say, equipment to get for your Switch. But if you want to get into racing, particularly when you're looking at different games besides Mario Kart 8, which of the racing wheels really appeal to me? That is what we're going to talk about in this video. There are a lot of different ways. I grabbed a couple of different games to see how is the compatibility with these games. Are they working right out of the box? We have two racing wheels, basically they are two different wheels apart. The left one is just a very cheap tiny wheel, just a fun novelty. And the right one is more like a serious racing wheel in my opinion. But how is the overall quality in general? This thing is very light weighted. It is like absolutely plastic fantastic, but not the chemical stuff that we have seen from China itself. So the overall quality is okay to be honest. It's just a very tiny and also very cool wheel to see. I really love the way they made the colors of the Mario theme implemented it in a hoary tiny wheel. This is old school. It is 180 degrees and it has just a basic, let's say, nice grip to it. There is nothing, let's say, to look out of it. I find it very fascinating to see how they can actually make this for the money because you're not paying a lot for this. The consideration also, this isn't basic wheel. So I think if you want to get into the basic stuff like called racing, this is just a fun thing. The D-pad feels quite nice to be honest. I think I can even play some Street Fighter with it, but all the other buttons are like clickish buttons. A little bit of a, let's say, in cheap feel to it. And of course the middle one to assign the yellow buttons. I think it's very cool that we have the option for that. We do have shifters that are going to be convenient. Something I wanted to check out with some games if it's actually going to be any good. Then in the middle of the wheel, we have the option to switch between the D-pad or the joystick. And yeah, this is going to be convenient if you need to navigate through the menu or a certain game needs to have like the joystick. So we can switch between that. At the bottom, we're going to get some old school suction knobs. Of course, it's not going to be working like this. So let's give you an example how the cheap wheel is just a fun novelty. I already mentioned this before, but don't get me wrong. It's not like the super cheap Chinese pl chemical plastic thing that we have seen many times before. No, it's a very cool wheel, but let's take a close look at the other one. The racing wheel itself, I must say that it is a very huge wheel compared with the previous one. It doesn't have the 900 degrees rotation, so it's going to be old school racing like in the 90s. No rumble and also no force feedback. The USB cable that comes with it is, by the way, very long. But what are we actually going to get with the racing wheels? It's quite similar when I'm looking at the cheap one. We ask the option to assign buttons if you want to. I think it's a very cool option to give you this. So if you have problems setting up a game, we have the option to do it through the assign button. But other single button, yeah, feels quite cheap. It's just your normal, typical, like cheap button feel, but nothing special or nothing bad. So what I did notice, there is no horn button in the middle, but we did have with the cheap one. Beside that, it does feel very nice when we play around with it. But when you're looking at the shifters, they're also made from plastic. Then of course we having the special switch that we can switch between the D-pad, left stick and the right stick. Very convenient if you don't have any movement in the game itself. The body is made out of plastic. It feels also quite lightweighted. But yeah, there is no force feedback in this, so that's also the reason why. But let's take a close look at the bracket. So what you need to do, attaching it is super easy. You just need to put it down there. Put the bolt in and that's it. How good it actually works when it comes putting it on the table. And it gives an absolutely great suction because this thing is very well placed with the four suction knobs. So it's an easy solution, but it works quite great. Let's take a quick look at the pedals. Two different pedals, but which one is great uh, which one is just horrible quite surprised to see that we did have some pedals coming with this thing yeah there is nothing special about it because what you're going to get are just basic two pedals there is no resistance whatsoever for the brake so yeah this is as basic it can be it's fun that it has it because it makes it way more like very fun to play racing games with some gas and, and brake pedal both cables are long enough if you want to place the pedals under the table of course and you just plug it in with this old school foam cable connection. The pedals, the pedal, let's put it to the metal. And I'm gonna say that they 
look quite nice. And they also have different springs. So for the brake and for the acceleration, we do get different springs in the inside. We can fold it open like that and it will be so much better to play like this. So it's even compact. If you don't want to use it, you don't have the room or you don't want to use it at all. It's all up to you. The more expensive pedals that came with the Hori wheel is so much better. Having two different springs give you also like a different way to play. It does some different experience, but they do connect with the same kind of cable. So you need to plug in the device itself in your Nintendo Switch docking. I think it's a way easier, of course, because if you're going to mess around with cables, it's going to be messy. So if you don't have any connections and the joystick, or in this case, the racing wheel doesn't work, what you need to do is go into the settings. In settings, and this is one of the two solutions we're having, this is something you should consider if you're going to plug in any, let's say, USB device, because this is, can be so much easier. If you have any problems, go to controllers and sensors and implement the Pro Controller feature. When you're going to turn it on, a lot of, let's say, inputs you're going to get with different controllers may work now that it didn't work before. If this doesn't solve your solution, what you can do is like looking into the switch on your racing wheel itself. For me, for this particular wheel, that was the solution. I've been messing with both of them and that's the way how you need to, let's say, activate your wheel. But now it recognizes the right joystick and we can navigate through the menu. So let's start with some Super Mario Kart and let's see what we're actually going to get and how does the game play. I can tell you my first impression is that this game is a lot of fun to play with a wheel. I personally choose it either over playing with a controller. You know, racing wheels are such a different way to play, but also the way how you just actually like interact. The dead zone, I really don't notice it at all. And I find the racing game is very direct on my racing wheel. So I don't have like input lag thing going on here. Card. Let's talk about the game that is basically like made for. Of course, everything has been mapped plug and play so we don't want to mess around with the preset and stuff like that everything works fine and you have like different ways to play for example acceleration can be done by the pedals but it can also use it when it comes to the wheels itself what i did like is the buttons on the wheel itself are mapped to the power up so this is a super convenient to play and i think it's pretty damn cool to be honest it's in dozen, just a different way to play and in my opinion you need to get used to it especially with a wheel but then you're going to get the hang of it. It's going to be in way more fun to play than with the controller, in my opinion. With the tiny wheel is a fun novelty. I personally prefer to have the Hori, the bigger one, the deluxe one, simply because there is so much more fun to play with that and better compatibility. Thank you for watching, consider subscribing, and it would be great to see you in the next video.